This is how my channel comments look like. And this is the result of a poll that I did last week. Hence, I had to do something. I'm mixing this unmixed low end into this mixed version while tapping into theory. You ready? Okay. So the low end in question sounds like this. Low end starts with a good kick. So what is a good kick? This is a kick chart. The only thing that you should know, the longer the kick gets, the sub it becomes. This area here is kind of a sweet spot at the moment for genres like melodic techno, progressive house, deep house and so on. Then what frequency is best for a kick? This is the low end frequency range. The sub bass should be below 65 Hz. And when it comes to below 20 Hz, we humans can't hear it. Between 20 to 35 Hz, many systems will really have hard time to reproduce. Between 55 to 65 Hz, it it is the transition from bass to sub bass and this area in some cases may feel weak. This left us only between 35Hz to 55Hz, so our kick and sub bass should sit around here. And if we translate this into the notes, the sweet spot is really E, F, G and A. This is a track that will be made in G minor and B is unfortunately not in G minor, so I would rather use G, G is just a sweet spot. So I'm gonna go quickly to keep my smooth kick sample pack and pick something in G. I'm going to keep it in a round sweet spot, so I'm going to bring this down a little bit, fade out like this. Then to just have a good practice, bring down the kick to the minus 6 dB. This is just for leaving a little bit headroom for us in the future to use in the mix. And this is the time we should use a reference track. Pick a track that you think has a perfect low end, and similar to your track that you are going for. I picked Mind Against Isolate, sounds like this. It is in a different key, doesn't really matter that much. We see that kick lengths are similar, good, but there's a, this small dip between thumb and the kick sub. There's a very common theme lately in the Magic Tech Row. Utility, click on gain. I'm just gonna give a small dip here. And depending on your taste, I will make our kick slightly darker. This is the point we need a visualizer. I'm using a Ulin loudness meter too. This is a free one. What you need to do, disable short time loudness, and we will only focus this area. Click this and decrease the offset around 20. The first thing that you should do with your reference track, bring it to the minus 6 dB as well. Loop your reference track somewhere that is not too busy. And before going forward, check the low end for the stereo image. Quiet mono? Above 100 Hz, we are having some stereo signal. To understand the relationship between kick and sub bass, we are going to use a very aggressive low pass filter. And after this, we are going to go back to our Ulin and check the relationship one more time. This is the kick hitting hard. And then we are having sub bass moving between 12 to 15, let's say. Start with the kick first. We are going to use exactly the same EQ here. First, we will start with the side chain to kick. Let me give you a short theory break about why we should use side chain primarily when we mix kick and sub bass. When you don't sidechain the kick to your sub bass, there is not really enough space for both of them to exist at the same time. If you try, they will mash up. However, when you use sidechain, you are effectively creating a pocket for your kick. So when both hits at the same time, kick has a place to live. Compressor, sidechain, kick. The important thing is look ahead so that we start with sidechain before the kick hits and make it really aggressive. And after that, we go to group and activate our Q3 so that we have the same aggressive filter here. We see that our sub is too loud, so let's bring it to 6 dB. I'm just going to use the utility here. But the reference track was mastered. What happens when you master the track, let me show you in the pro -L, that you push this up. The first thing that will hit the limiter is the kick and the level of the kick will go down. Hence, you should be aiming 3-4 dB less loud than the reference track that you are looking at. Now we have quieter than the reference track, but again, this is just a compensating the limiter at the end of the master chain. Now we get the loudness right, we should also take a look at the envelope shapes. One more time, reference track. 
we see that the sub has uh, attack and then sustain. Let's go to our version. And take a look one more time. Now we have much similar looking sub bass response. Once this is done, we have a second bass here sounding like this. Again, we will start with sidechain, but this time we will make it less aggressive. We will use high pass to cut the super lows, because now we have sub there. A bit boost here to emphasize these areas. Play with the envelopes to fit more to the track. Loudness in this layer is less important, you can actually go for the taste. Do you remember that stereo part? In this preset we have already unison here, so we can use the stereo the way we like it. I'm gonna do like this, bring this down, more or less really mono. And this one I'm gonna tighten up. And here you can get also creative. I have a delay chain here, I'm gonna send it there some. This gives me a bit more driving feel. And when we solo the delay, you will see that it's actually quite high pitched. And of course, we should also charge chain this to the kick so that we can feel the groove. If you want more presses, you can layer this one with the percussion. Just a click from my smooth kick sample pack. Without, without. With. It really depends on taste. I'm gonna just use ever slightly. And of course, I chain it to kick as well. Now the final step is a bit taste thing. I like to group them together and use a slice saturator. Those edit harmonics glues them together and slightly smooths the dynamics. And then we are gonna use a smooth glue compression. And finally, we're gonna use a channel EQ. Without, with, you should be really careful that if you're having elements that's sitting close to the low end, like the pad sound here, you should also high pass them to avoid really cluttering in the low end. And remember to side chain those elements to kick. So together. But this is still not done. One thing you should be making sure that you should do the cell phone test and the home owner speaker test. The cell phone test, you just use the high pass filter around 800 hertz. This is good, right? This is, you still hear the kick, you still hear other elements, nice. And the home owner regular speaker test is around 200 hertz. And look, we're still good. And we are safe, we are good to go.